What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an upgraded version of the Pepper Jobs Extend Touch, which actually just turns out to be my favorite battery powered portable monitor that I've ever taken a look at on the channel. Well, truthfully, I've only taken a look at version one, but today we're going to be taking a look at V3 of the Extend Touch X16. And yeah, with these upgrades here, I think this is going to be totally worth it if you're looking for a battery powered portable monitor. And by the way, this does come in a bigger package, so you also get an accessories box. We'll take a look at everything that comes with this in just a second, but let's go ahead and get this unboxed first. This is known as the Pepper Jobs Extend Touch XT 1610F V3. We get our quick start guide here, gives us all the information we need to know about the OSD and everything like that. And even though the name suggests we might have a 16 inch display, it's actually 15.6 inches, but we've got a resolution of 1920 by 1080 running at 60 Hertz. 72% NTSC color gamut, dual 2 watt stereo speakers, 10 points of touch, and a built-in 10,800 milliamp hour battery, which is definitely one of the big claim to fames when it comes to this monitor. And with the V3, we actually get full Mac OS support, so we can plug this into our MacBook or our iMac and use it as a touch screen to control the whole operating system. So inside of the box, obviously, you're going to get the monitor itself. We also get a full-size HDMI cable, and this is something I love about the monitor. No micro or mini on this thing. It's a full-size HDMI connection. We also get a 30-watt power adapter to charge the battery up. And keep in mind, this also supports USB Type-C video in. It supports alt mode, so if you just want to run your phone over a single USB Type-C cable, or your Steam Deck, your Switch, your mini PC, your MacBook, all you need is that single USB Type-C cable to get video in and touch throughput on this monitor. So basically, this portable monitor is going to work with anything that has video out, be it HDMI or USB Type-C. Now, when it comes to enabling touch with different devices, there are some that just aren't going to work with it, like the Nintendo Switch. But with V3, like I mentioned, we do have full Mac OS support, and that's the first thing I want to take a look at. All right, so what I've got here is an M1 MacBook Pro. As a lot of us already know, this does not support touch out of the box. They just don't make Macs with touch screen yet. Maybe down the road they will. And this is something I get asked about quite a bit whenever I do a portable monitor review. I've never been able to get one to work except for this one here. So the V3, all I did was plug it right in with that USB Type-C cable. We've got video over to the external monitor and touch support. So yeah, I did download one game that really works well with touch support, and that's going to be Angry Birds. Not a game that I personally play on a regular basis, but I went ahead and downloaded it for this video. And as a lot of us already know, Angry Birds is a mobile game. It's really meant to be used with the touch screen. Now you can always use your trackpad or a mouse and keyboard to play the game. But with this here, I figured I'd give you a good demo on how touch works with the Mac. All right, so we're just going to be playing directly from the Extend Touch. I think I can skip this. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, there we go. If we hold it, we can skip. And uh, obviously, you're going to use the slingshot here. It's actually really cool to be playing this on Mac OS with the touch screen. This is something I've never been able to do before. So yeah, the Extend Touch X16 V3 does work with Mac OS. If you've been looking for an external monitor with touch support for your Mac, I would definitely check this one out first. All right, so before we test out some more devices, I did want to give you a quick look at the OSD and what kind of settings we have here. I've just got my Motorola phone plugged in with Ready4. It is all touch based. We can access this OSD basically at any time. From the main menu, we can access the brightness and volume control. Like I mentioned, we do have dual stereo speakers in this thing. We've got our input, so we can go HDMI or USB Type-C. We've got some more image adjustments here. We can fine tune the picture to our liking, or we could use the presets. We've got some down here, NTSC, Adobe, sRGB. It's really up to you. We've got these quick presets, or you could just go through and fine tune it. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. That's what I've done with version one. I've got it set up exactly how I like it, and I think it looks really good. The cover that comes included is magnetic. It covers the back and the screen when it's shut, but it also acts as a stand, as you can see here. When it comes to I.O., over here on the left-hand side, we've got a full-size HDMI port and two USB Type-C ports. Both of these will carry power and video. 
Plus, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack just in case you want to plug your headphones in. Moving over to the right hand side, we've got our menu control rocker, a power button, and we've got a full size USB 3.0 OTG port. And what this allows us to do is basically add an extra port to whatever device we have plugged into here over USB type C. Definitely comes in handy for plugging in, let's say a keyboard and mouse combo, just using a USB dongle here. So it's really nice to have that Mac OS support, but my main use case scenario for a monitor like this would be for my Android device, be it a tablet or a phone with a desktop interface like Samsung DeX. So I've got my Galaxy S10 right here. I've got it set up to go directly into DeX once it detects an external monitor. And as you can see, it comes right up. We've got a desktop interface and I can actually still use my phone. Touch works here with the Extend Touch. No problem at all. And with DeX, we also have a built-in touchpad and keyboard on the phone screen if you want to use that. But we've also got that OTG port. So I've just plugged in a keyboard and mouse combo and it makes it really handy. That way we don't have to add any extra adapters to the phone. We've just got that single USB Type-C to the monitor and the dongle is plugged into that OTG port on the display. Another cool thing they've added with V3 is the option to turn charging off. Right now it's off, but as soon as I turn it on, you'll see my phone's gonna start to charge and now it's charging from the internal battery on the portable monitor. So we've got a lot of battery life out of this thing at 10,000 milliamps. We're charging the phone and powering the display from the internal battery that's built into the Extend Touch. Now Samsung isn't the only one with the desktop interface. Right now I've got the Moto Edge 30 with Motorola's new Ready 4. This is one that I really like and I've actually got it scaled up quite a bit. But from the main menu, as you can see, we've got a few options. We can go directly into the gaming section. It's going to list all of my games. I can add and remove them from here. Or we can go to full desktop mode. So I've actually got this scaled up quite a bit so we can see it a little better, but uh, from the options we can scale it down. And obviously I'm still using that mouse connected over OTG, but touch also works. Just get it right in here to YouTube, scale it up. And the speakers on the monitor actually sound really good. We've got stereo speakers here. They're at two watts, eight ohms, and uh, on the V2 they actually had four speakers, but I actually think this does sound better. Those were four one watt speakers. Here we've got the two two watt, which do get a bit louder. But yeah, I mean, for media playback or work, if you want to do some email checking, document editing, things like that, it works out just fine on this monitor. But uh, one of my favorite things to do like this is gaming be it emulation or native Android gaming. I'll go ahead and jump right into a little bit of Dreamcast emulation. And I'm just using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth to the phone. You can play whatever games you want. As long as they support controllers, you'll be able to use them in desktop mode on this bigger display. But yeah, this is one of my big uses for the original Extend Touch that I use. I personally love Samsung DeX. I've got the Galaxy S22 with everything set up. I could basically use that as my main PC when it's connected to an external display. But another thing I was really interested in was using the Steam Deck with this. So using the Steam Deck in handheld mode is awesome, but adding a little extra screen real estate definitely helps out. And from here, we could always use that OTG port for a mouse and keyboard, but once this is connected, we've got full touch control over the Steam Deck, so it'll function just like the Steam Deck's built-in display. We've got that full touch functionality, so from here we can head into our settings, we could go over to the store, we can launch a game, but you know, playing PC games with the touch screen doesn't work out too well, so I've got an Xbox controller connected here also. And playing PC games works out great. Now, unfortunately, we cannot control the brightness on this display from the Steam Deck settings, and I kind of didn't expect it to work that way. But one of the main reasons I would use an external display with the Steam Deck in the first place is for desktop mode. And this can be set up in several different ways. Right now, I've got the Extend Touch as my main display. Secondary display is going to be the screen that's built into the Steam Deck, but we could always disable this. Personally, I usually leave it on, but you know, if you ever wanted to, all you need to do is head over to settings and we're going to find display. Make sure the extend touch or your external monitor is set as your primary and you can go ahead and disable the built in screen. So there we have it. Now we've got one display here and we can use this in desktop mode, get some work done. You can even game like this. It's really up to you. The final thing I wanted to show off here was the Nintendo Switch. Now, when it comes down to it, this is going to work with all of the consoles, the Xbox Series S, the Series X, the PS5, over HDMI. But with the Nintendo Switch, by the way, I have the OLED model. 
we can actually plug directly into USB Type-C. Now with all of the consoles, we're not going to get the touchscreen working. Xbox, PS5, or Nintendo consoles just won't allow it. And for the Switch, we can't get a mouse and keyboard working here. But we can use a wireless controller, or you can detach the Joy-Cons if you want to, and play it just like this. And it works great, sounds fine, looks amazing. And we've got a much larger battery-powered portable display here. So, uh, you know, connecting a couple controllers or just using the Joy-Cons for multiplayer on this thing would work out great when you're on the go. So yeah, overall, loving the upgrades here with version 3. I'm glad they added Mac OS support. And you know, if you're interested in picking something like this up, I will leave a few links in the description. And of course, there's a ton of portable monitors on the market right now. If you check Amazon, you'll see listings for thousands of them. But remember, 99.9% .9 of those don't have built-in batteries like this thing does. And that's really where this thing comes in very, very handy. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always... Thanks for watching.